There's no judgment. Well, even and, and outside of oh. the times when you need it now, the the requirements for for capturing the data and entering into the machines has dramatically reduced the patient contact right. that any of yeah. us have. It's yeah. Physicians, nurses, therapists, there's only so many hours in a day that they can work. Okay? And it used to be where you could spend most of those hours interacting with your patient, getting to know them, getting to see the subtle things that make a great physician, therapist, whatever, great. The things that the book doesn't teach you, what you gain from the experience of actually sitting with a patient and saying, I don't know what it is, something's not right. Now you have the same amount of time, but you've been told that you better take a big chunk of it and make sure that we, you as the government, get our data. Can have everything you do yeah. in neat little boxes, yeah. even though what we do doesn't the important stuff doesn't fit in the boxes. And you better so now to we have to spend not only extra time putting in information, but we have to manufacture information so it fits the boxes. We actually now have to make things up <laughs> and collect new information that is completely useless to us and doesn't help one bit to take care of the patient's needs, yeah, particularly in a specialty like orthopedics. We're not primary care they're doctors, they're but they're the they're government they're doesn't, they're doesn't differentiate between us or the medical doctor down the road. We all need to collect the same data, which is data we haven't had to collect because it doesn't make a bit of difference. But now we got to collect it, input it, make sure we're getting credit for it. Where's all that time coming from? It's coming from the time we used to use to figure out what's going on with the patient. Yeah. But, you know, and, so what and happens though, you're, you're seeing less patients in that time frame, and what happens with the government money? We're, they're, they're spending less money. So yeah. basically they're saving money by putting more work on us because we only have a certain number of hours in a day. Yeah. We see less patients. That's not good for our patients. It's not good for somebody who calls and said, I, I twisted my ankle and I need to be seen because we got all this extra work to do. There's only so much time in a day, so we see less patients, and you our income goes down, yeah. and our expenses have gone up. And right. you're gonna see even less patients now. Yes, right? it's, it's gonna be worse. And then, but then, there's gonna be a lot more patients pushed into Medicaid. Sure. So as there is right now, on the entire Treasure Coast, there's one orthopedic surgeon not who will operative. see a Medicaid patient. And he operative. hasn't done surgery in years. over 10 years. years. Yeah. One orthopedist seeing Medicaid patients. Well, there's a lot of Medicaid patients. Does that mean no Medicaid patients are being taken care of in the Treasure Coast? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that those of us who, until recently, had the time and were profitable and didn't have to worry, okay, now I have hardly any time, my margins are almost nothing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before someone would call, I mean, I didn't even ask what they're, if they were covered or whatever, hey, well, hey, it's, it's broken, I'll fix it, that's great. Yeah. They can't pay, that's okay, there's enough people who are paying that I am happy to do my share, so, yeah. as I've been asked to do, and take care of these people who can't pay, maybe some will pay, maybe some won't, but I know that I have a certain amount of time and effort to give for absolutely nothing and I don't care. Mm -hmm. However, now a big chunk of that time and effort is spent on the computer. Another big part of that time and effort is making sure that what I've done when someone tries to sue me, I can defend. And now That's when I best. get a call, I'll say, hey, yeah. this person broke something, they don't have insurance. Oh, um, I don't know where or when I can see it. Yeah. You know, so there wasn't such a big crisis in taking care of uninsured patients. We all did it every day, okay? And now that the government wants to make sure that they take care of those people, they're not going to be able to. We were doing a better job than they're telling people we were doing. You know, I love the brilliance of our government. What are we spending on on computerizing all the doctor's offices and hospitals, but they forgot one little thing, it's called a standard, so every computer yeah. talks to the, uh, each other. You know, but that's one of the things, is you have to be able to send data to meet your requirements from one to the other. 
So we have to figure out ways of workarounds. That's a famous computer word that I've learned. Workaround. Mm -hmm. We've got to make a workaround so we can send data here and there and demonstrate it so we can meet our goals. You mentioned that the trial lawyers have a strong and sloppy. And when you look at who contributes most to the Democratic Party, they're up towards the top in unions. Yep. And so much legislation goes their way. Absolutely. And you're obviously we have a lot of complaints, but I'd say your average person thinks doctors are rich and lucky. Just kind of, you know what I mean? I would say a lot of people think that. So when we're complaining about these things, I'm just saying that the general perception is, you know, you guys want love. Yeah, but that's, but why, that's why your voice has to get out there well, because I think that if it really is the, the the doctors versus the trial lawyers, I think that the people will decide that they will side with the doctors, but your voice is not being heard. Well, strategically, my observation has been we got a lot of complaints, but we're not very well organized. So my observation that the message out there is we're rich and fine. That I'm just saying in general. Mm -hmm. But there's not a real strong lobby effort. And when you look at the top contributors, there's the number no, one. no physician lobby contributing to, you know, for, and I'm just curious what, from a strategic standpoint, what would be the best way for us to get our voice out and, and for very real concern? And that's exactly what, what I just talked about here. you got a great opportunity, you're going to be on a conservative website pretty soon tonight. Now, regionally, I mean, that's the next level, or the operational level, the, the middle level, at the statewide basis, you know, how do you come together and let your voice be heard and start to pool your resources? And strategically, at the, at the national level, you know, the national uh, orthopedic surgeons, or you have to start bringing together your specialty industry or, you know, the pra practicing doctors uh, as a whole. It's not so much about, you know, the, the money that you contribute, but the, the, the voice that is being heard. You know, when was the last time, truly, the doctors got together on the East Capitol steps? You know, someone in the in the medical profession should right now be planning doctors being on the East Capitol steps. What? Code Paint does it. You know, we talk about taking taxpayer money away from Planned Parenthood. Boy, let me tell you what. Within f 36 hours, you got all the Code Pink up there and all with their, their pink hats and pink this, and they're there. You talk about the unions, and they're there. So, I mean, we've got to get better with that type of grassroots activity that starts at the tactical but level. We're too freaking busy. But that's we're because we're too busy working, and that's the problem. Well, that, yeah, 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 but, but that, this, the, this is my point. The legal point. system has time. This, I mean, is they're, they're, this is my point. This is my point. Some, 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 somehow, some way, you got to find one day. This is a, uh, a, a very interesting maxim that I learned when I had my three-year change assignment with the Marines. I had a first sergeant tell me, that if you ever find yourself in a fair fight, it's all because your tactics suck. Okay. You're not in a fair fight. Now, if you want to continue to say, I'm too busy, whatever, then you're going to lose. If you can't find that 24 to 48 hours where you pull together and make your voice be heard up in Washington, D.C., then you're, you're going to get the short end on, on the stick. You know, you're talking about very good issues that the American people don't know. Tell your story. I guarantee you people here in St. Lucie County don't, in Trevor Coast, they don't know the story that you're telling me right here, right now. Actually, a lot of the patients, you know, I tell, I speak to a lot of them. I know we all do, and I know. But, but you know, it really comes down to the fact that this has nothing to do about the quality of health care, you know, which is pretty, pretty much near and dear to all of our hearts. It has everything to do with the takeover and really heading towards socialism. So, um, you know, just and, and you're right. You, you know, Dodd-Frank, the government now controls the financial sector. Automobile sector, you know, healthcare law—they got you all. You know, cap and trade. If cap and trade had gone through the legislative process, that's the energy sector. But instead, they just turn over to the regulatory side, and the EPA is going nuts. The uh, Employee Free Choice Act, car check. You know, the unions—they couldn't get it through the regulatory process. Now they turn to the National Labor Relations Board and look at the things that they're doing. This is what is happening in our country, and and unless we have people that let that. Your voice has got to be heard. You just do. And, and so the people will hear that and start saying, this is a local doctor saying, this is not a good thing. And there will be patients of yours that are out there that say, that's my doctor. I want to talk to him about this a little more. And you will have patients that say, you know, don't, you know Dr. Powers, right? Well, do you agree with him? Absolutely. And so now you get the discussion going on in this local community. But if you just sit here and, and you know, I, I'm going to, you know, use an expression, just kind of bitch and moan about it, okay? And I'm not, you know, no offense. 
You If that is your tactic, then the the people with the big microphone and the bully pulpit, they'll squash. That's what I see. The big, and I'm just curious from a, a, a national level. You know, the the thing is, healthcare boils down to free healthcare. You have a right to healthcare. It's that simple of a message. The proponents of it. You have a privilege. Exactly. In this country it is not a right. Well, I mean, the way that it's being sold. I'm saying yep. their sound bites are concise. They appeal to people. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And that's They're why. Masters. And what I've seen is, it's when we start arguing about our electronic medical. No one really, you know, it becomes a complex issue. And I think they really love if we start complaining. We're looking at the bigger issue, it's yeah. socialism. Yeah. This insurance thing is just set up to fail over time. Sure. It's like uh, Atlas but see, Shrug, but yeah, if absolutely. we can simplify a socialism message. But you know, something. the best thing was when he broke down and said, you know, these electronic, you know, once upon a time I had this much time to see patients. Now all of a sudden I get, you know, these regulations and, and all of this stuff that I have to continue to do, records and all this stuff, stuff. and I got less time to see patients. And I have less time to see patients. You know, I used to have this much time, I could see that uninsured person. And I had the, the, the flexibility to be able to. Now when you explain it in that type of manner, then the people will get it. A simpler message. Like that, yeah, can't message. see yeah. enough patients. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. That's it. That's what you talk about. And talk about the quality of care is going to be degraded. It really is. And furthermore, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, we're going to start turning your, turn your back. Un un unless you want to see us go out of business, which means what? Then I won't be here any anyhow. That's the point that you have to get to people. Because my body is personal. And, and when you start to talk about the means by which government has you know, put itself in between me and him, now people get it. And that is exactly what has happened. You know, there is a there is a filter that is now between the doctor patient relationship that, you know, is is an obstacle to me being able to have quality health care that I want. And then we also have to talk about how do we incentivize. So you're now practicing the defensive medicine. You know, tort reform is a very important thing. States that have instituted tort reform have seen costs go down. Texas, California, Mississippi. Don't have it here in Florida, but you should when you think about all the seniors that we have here. So uh, that's another important aspect. You know, that's what you have to be able to do. You, you've got to sell your story. And, and really, it comes down when you say, how can all this be happening? Because there are two very different principles or philosophies of governance in this country right now. And, and that's why I say you have to call it as it is. You can call it communism, progressivism, socialism, Marxism, statism, but it is something that believes in the overarching growth of the bureaucratic nanny state instead of individual industrialism. That's it. Dodd-Frank is about nationalizing the financial sector. Healthcare law, nationalizing the healthcare sector. Automobile bailouts, you know, now they control, you know, operating interests in, uh, in automobile, you know, industry. This is what is happening in our country, slowly but surely. And you want to wake up and you want to find that, you know, this country is centrally planned and executed from Washington, D.C., which is not what it's supposed to be. You know, the, the one thing, you have the legislative branch, but then you, know, you also have the legal branch that you sit there and you go, oh my God, how could, how could anybody rule the way they rule? But it's the same thing. It's just like with the, with the auto dealers, the bailout, mm -hmm. and the way they took away the bondholders. Yep. Took away their rights. That's against the law from what last I heard. Well, I mean, think about it. this. Who, who would have ever thought that we would live in a country where uh, a government agency would tell a private sector uh, company where they could relocate a factory? It's insane. It is. <laughs> but, but you have the judges, some of these judges back it up when they go to the courts. Well, that's the National Labor, that's the Labor Relations Board that did that. You know, they were going to issue a fine against Boeing for relocating the factory. Right they, to work state. they weren't relocating, they are opening a new yep. factory. Well, They weren't getting rid of any jobs from Washington no, State. Right. It was a new expansion. Yeah. You know, the, getting back for a second on the legal front, mm -hmm. you know, lawyers are now considering allowing non-lawyers to own part of a law firm. It blows my mind 
that they say lawyers should own law firms and nobody else should own or control lawyers because it affects the client lawyer relationship and it could adversely affect that and once you impose I'm working for the boss here then my incentive for my client might change it's no longer honorable I might do something for my client to please the boss yet for physicians they are pushing physicians to work for the boss at the hospital mm -hmm. and the boss at the hospital you know what that's great that's great you know you referred this patient to that doctor there because you like him a lot. But you know what? We don't employ him. You know, that position, you might have better results, but you know what? You need to go here because he uses our facility. He uses our therapy unit. He uses our x-ray machine. Mm -hmm. And so the decision-making process for that physician has now been altered. Mm -hmm. That same very important doctor-patient relationship that is so sacred to the lawyers mm -hmm has been absolutely thrown on the, under the bus for the physicians. Mm -hmm. And it, it just boggles my mind how y y we have this discussion, you know, it was in the news, what, a couple months ago, how lawyers are considering allowing them, because essentially they've had partners that are accountants that own a part of the firm, mm -hmm. and this and that. They're going to try and allow it to happen. But we've destroyed the patient-doctor sacred relationship in this country. We're letting it just go right down the tube. I know when you're an employee, I mean, I have friends that are employees for hospitals. And, you know, they're on time frames. They're, they're told where to refer to. Now that the computers, they're tracking. they track everything. And they yeah, walk in right. at the end of the day and say, you know, uh, we have to improve over here. And, you know, and they don't come out and say, you can't refer to Dr. X. You can't refer to Dr. Sharkey here because we employ an ears, nose, and throat doctor over there. Um, they can't come out and say that per se, <clears throat> but once the door's closed, it's closed. <laughs> it's closed. <laughs> it's closed. <laughs> it's closed. Speaking you know what of what? that is the simple message. That you talk about a simple message? Yeah. That's something everybody knows when that door's shut. Oh, you know, yeah. People, you basically well, confess their sins. There's the simple message that should get out. The doctor-patient relationship is, is being crushed. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be basically it's a computer between you. It's going to be eliminated. The computer you're, between you, but also these 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 government agencies that are in this bill mm -hmm. that are basically oh, yeah. going to tell us how to treat patients. Absolutely. I oh, they just are. recently spoke to a, a specialty physician who's on staff at a hospital that he isn't employed by. Apparently, their computer system, when the physician requests a consultation, they're, they're it doesn't list every doctor on staff. It, 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 you, you put it in a specialist, <coughs> and only the hospital-employed specialists yeah. come up as a That's choice right. yeah. to choose for a consultant. That's right. Yeah. I know that. I was part of that problem. Well, I had to call and get my name I, put on. And that's the system that our hospital is going to be going to within the next two years. Of course. And every orthopedic patient there that they can do will be sent to their employee orthopedic physicians in Fort right. Pierce. And, and, and that's the way around the system just to be able to refer to the physicians they want to if they're not employed by. Which the violates the free market <laughs> principle of competition. Not to, mention, uh, not, not to mention that the, the best, best interest of the patient. The, you know, we're, we're, all th we're all about green, except when we have to send the patient an extra 30 miles each way to go get a test by a covered facility. You know, so what if it costs the patient you know, an extra two hours in traffic and an extra 20 bucks in gas mm -hmm. and an extra, you know, how many tons of carbon dioxide we put out this world. But heaven forbid they go get an MRI on the same day they see Dr. Powers. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy.